Hi everyone, it's B. Welcome to another episode of So Honey Bee. Today I wanted to share with you some of the things I accomplished in the month of May and some of the things that I hope to accomplish in the month of June. Also, the details to the prize for our May Sew Along. So that's a lot of stuff. So let's get started. Let's jump right in with what am I wearing. It is a McCall's Spa Essentials 4261 t-shirt. There were details that I changed that are easy to see. It, I shortened the sleeve um, from a long sleeve to a short sleeve. Another detail that I changed was the neckline. Um, what I used was a fold over elastic, which is pretty self-explanatory. There's a shiny side and a matte side, and then it just folds over. But um, that's what I used for that. And what I did was I pulled the elastic ever so slightly so it would create this ripple effect um, around the neckline. Let me pull my hair out of the way so you can see it. And so I really liked that because um, the material that I used, when I purchased the material, I purchased quite a bit of the material so that I can make multiple t-shirts because you can never have enough white t-shirts. But um, I've already made three of them and I'm wanting to make other ones with a V neckline and maybe a square neckline and, and um, kind of experiment with different styles of necklines for the, just a simple t-shirt. So I got multiple yards of that. So I really like this um, fabric because it is a good quality jersey fabric. So you can't, if you, if you pull on it, it's not see-through. So that was something that I definitely needed um, in a t-shirt fabric. So yeah, I got that. And so you'll be able to see some of the other t-shirts that I make in the near, very near future for this month. Another thing I wanted to share with you is the details to the May Sew Along. It is for McCall's Pattern 6994. And it is a simple pattern and it's from the series Learn to Sew for Fun. So let me show you the price to that pattern. And what it is, it is, it is a keepsake box, reed beads, journal, and pen. So you can see, let me get it so that there's no glare. It's a keepsake box that has glitter that floats inside of there. And it says, glitter is my favorite color. And that's in the lid that it looks like that. Um, the reed beads is a like a bookmarker and it is elastic with beads on it and a little golden purse and if you've never used three beads let me show that and it um is a little elastic thing that um, you put on your journal as a bookmarker and then it has a little glitter journal and a glitter marker and uh, um, in the keepsake box, you can put anything you would like. Um, you can keep bobbins, pins, buttons. What I use for mine is uh, I have my sewing attachments and presser feet for my 1938 sewing machine. And you can see this one's noisy because it has all the attachments inside of it. And I have my uh, manual also for my 1938 sewing machine. So that's what I keep that in there. And it has a tab on the top. I'll include a tab also. So in case you want to hang it like I do from my pegboard. So that is the, the prize for the May Sew Along. And again, it says glitter is my favorite color. So I look forward to drawing the prize for that. And then here is the journal, you can see. That one is all wrapped up with the pin still, but it has just a uh, lined paper inside of it. And what you could do is you can um, write little notes on things you've learned or, 
or um, materials or, or notions or things that you have or that you need and so it's small enough to fit in your bag so that when you go to the fabric store you can just pull it out and have all the details there okay so that's the journal that goes inside of there and now um, for this pattern one of the things that I wanted to make for June is because I made this one here and you can actually see the skirt it is this one right here right behind me and it is an elastic waistband no zipper and the the um, waistband is really easy to attach because it's a one-to-one -one ratio there's no gathering or anything on the waistband so I really really did like that skirt but I want to make view B which is um, very much like a circle skirt um, but of course I'm gonna make it a little longer but that's the one that I wanted to make for June and I'm gonna use this fabric it is a pinstripe let me see if I can get close enough it's a navy blue um, pinstripe and so uh, yeah so I will be sharing that for um, my makes for June so stay tuned for that and I will show um, this skirt already made so that when we draw for the prize um, then you will be able to see both options the the a-line skirt and then the circle skirt so we'll have both of those so I hope you will participate I was really happy to to see that there were some people who participated because when I first started um, my idea for wanting to do a sew along each month and giving a prize I was a little worried and apprehensive that no one would join in or join me so I was really happy when I found out others were going to participate so that was awesome. That was an awesome feeling. So those of you who have already participated, thank you. And for those of you who are going to participate, also thank you. But anyways, here's again. And you will be able to see um, this skirt when we draw the prize. Okay, so that's that. Now, I wanted to share one of the makes that I made in the month of May. This was one of the patterns that I featured. It was $21.54. You can see it's um, Simplicity and that blouse there. There were some details in this blouse that I changed right off the bat. There were some um, things that I altered or changed in the pattern before I cut it out. And then there are some things that I will change when I make this pattern again. I did enjoy making this blouse and yes, I will make another one. So let me share um, the things that I changed first of all, right off the bat, was the bow. I knew I wasn't going to like that bow. Um, so I, I didn't add it at all. And you'll be able to see this blouse. It's the one that's right behind me. It is um, one of the featured fabrics also in my May plans. Um, it was a fabric that I got from Joann's. And so if you would like to have more details about the fabric, you can watch that video. I'll also leave a link at for it below. But um, the neckline, I knew I wasn't going to like the neckline. And I knew that I would want to wear a necklace with the pattern. With the blouse um, so I just went ahead and eliminated the bow altogether but I really did like the detail in this collar um, and I liked the space here because I can also put a brooch or something that I would like to add a small detail of a jewelry or anything like that other than a necklace so I did really like that about this pattern so that was something the bow just eliminated it all together now things that I altered in the pattern before I cut it out I put in a full bust adjustment which was very easy to do um, I just pivot and swing 
the pattern um, instead of slashing or cutting or anything like that. I will be, um, there was a request for a video on how I do that, so I'll be uh, sharing that one of those with you this month also. Another detail that I really liked on this pattern was that there are front darts and back darts. So when I get a pattern that has darts in it, I really, really appreciate that because you can always alter the pattern. If you've already cut it out, you can alter the pattern by taking it out, by eliminating the darts altogether, or taking it in by taking a little bit more of the dart when you sew it. So that is always a really easy way to make a fix to if you um, have a full bust adjustment and you want to take a little bit more out of the waist or the hip. So I really did appreciate that about this pattern. Another thing that I appreciated about this pattern um, was the armhole. Um, I liked the armhole and I, I didn't really even have to change it. Usually I'll take out my master pattern formula and um, put it right to the pattern and make the adjustment before it is cut out so that that way when you are standing there you will notice that there are sometimes when people make garments for themselves their blouse will pull away from their body either from the front or the back to where you can see inside with this pattern, I didn't have to really adjust the armhole. It was just right on to my arm, to my arm, to where it fell right back here and in the front, so that even though it is an open armhole or sleeveless, there's you you won't be able to see inside. Another detail that I really liked in this pattern is an invisible side zipper. Um, you can't see the zipper because it's invisible, but um, there is a zipper right here. And so I really liked that detail because I have made garments and dresses, blouses, with a, a lat side zipper, but there's always a bulk to it or a bulge. And when it comes to your waist, you don't want it, any kind of bulk or a bulge in your waistline that with this invisible zipper it lays really really smooth and flat against your skin so that was another detail that i really liked another thing that i really liked about this um blouse was let me turn it a little bit more so you can see there is a keyhole neckline in the back and it's closed with a button and a loop I really liked that because a lot of times when you see a pattern that is um, a blouse out of a woven fabric and it is a fitted blouse, you will see that they have there is a zipper that goes all the way down. And a lot of times that zipper is there. So when you put it on the blouse and you put it over your head and over your bust, that way, um, that can accommodate for that space that where it needs to go and widen and then you zip it up but what i really liked about this was the back opening and the the side zipper and that made the details to this blouse that much nicer i really liked this blouse now so oh and the fabric was wonderful it was just really awesome to sew with um, Joann's has a number of other florals that are in this same line. I am definitely going to go back and get some more because I really liked this fabric and sewing with it. Now, something that I will change the next time I make this blouse. I think it's really easy to see because it just stares at you as soon as you see this blouse. And that is the center seam down the center of this blouse. It was something that I did not like. Um, you can see here with the floral that the floral is cut off, and um, I didn't I didn't like that. You can 
if you have time, place the and cut each piece individually, um, like as if there was a nap to the fabric. And that you can do. But one thing I did not like that, let me move my necklace out of the way here, is this keyhole neckline here. I did not like that. I made the, I heightened it by an inch and I thought that I would be able to get away with that, that um, it would still be appropriate for myself, but it wasn't. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is for this blouse, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew that up. But for the next time when I make this blouse, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this center bodice, um, center it on the fold and eliminate the, the seam allowance on this seam line here. And so it will eliminate the whole um flower pattern breaking up and then starting again so if it was a solid fabric it wouldn't have been noticeable you'd still see the center seam but when it comes to the keyhole that's a given but I didn't like that so I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate that the next time I make this blouse but again it is a simplicity 2154 and um, so what I'm going to do is because I was making this boss for my convention in August, um, I'm going to go ahead and make it again and make the changes that I'm wanting to make in a different fabric. Probably the same line, but a different um, floral. But I'm still going to go ahead and make this cardigan jacket and the skirt. So I really, really like that. And I'm going to eliminate the bow again also. So that is something that I'm going to be making in the next couple of months. So stay tuned for that in the probably next month's make or for um, the beginning of August also. It might be in July. But let me share with you another one of the patterns that... Um, I had featured for my May makes, and it's uh, Buttrick 6379. This one here. The more um, you, you will see the things that I sew, the more you'll notice I sew a lot of suits. It is my style, it is something that I really love to wear, is vintage uh, style, vintage suits. A lot of times from the 1930s and 1940s. I'm not so much vintage style into the 50s. From time to time I will um, sew something from the 50s, but I like more of the um, pre-war uh, era or the uh, just after the war era because there, the skirts are more slender and then uh, because that you when you think of all the things that were happening in the world during that time, there was a lot of rationing of fabric and so, so you didn't have a whole lot of fullness in the skirts and in the dresses that you see in the 1930s and the 1940s. Then you see the, the whole change in fashion in the 1950s after the war to where fabric became more abundant and so people wanted to show off how much fabric and how much of abundance there was in everything after the war. So then you got into the fuller skirts. But anyways, let me get back to what I was talking about. Um, so this here is a 1950, it's a retro 1950. So I really, really like that. And so let me share with you put that right there the fabric and I have a swatch of it here I actually purchased the whole bolt so I cut off a small swatch of it because the bolt is too heavy um, to show you but it is a navy blue let's see I'm trying to see if I can it's a navy blue and it has a uh, textured stripe to it not it's not you can't feel it 
but you can see it, but it's not a different color stripe. It's just a textured stripe. I think you can see that. But um, I got the whole, when I saw this fabric, I purchased the whole bolt. So I got about eight and a half yards of it. And um, you may think that that's a lot of material and it is, but I really want to do this suit and let me put that, this over here and I am also going to do this suit. Now, um, you may be wondering why am I going to do two suits out of the same fabric? That is because I can interchange them. Both jackets, if you see, both jackets have their own separate style and their own separate design so that I can interchange the skirts with the jackets and I will have actually four suits even though there's just two. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> but let me go ahead and show you oh and this is a skirt this is a real strange way that mccall's did this pattern it's the archive collection circa 1933 um it is 69.95 and the skirt is 69.93 and it is this suit here but you had to purchase it in two patterns so you see here this pattern has just the jacket and this pattern has just the skirt. So anyways, um, yeah, I the details of this suit, this is such a beautiful suit. I have actually made the skirt to this suit already once. And let me show you here. This is the jacket. And let me grab it again so you can see it. This is a jacket here. Um, ignore the basting lines because I have not finished it. I've really got to finish this jacket. But all I have to do is put on the cuffs and um, the skirt is also in a charcoal color. But when I make this again, I'm going to be making it out of the navy stripe. Now, there are a lot of times that I make the suits that I wear, and a lot of times they are in a, a black or a charcoal or a gray, a brown, a navy, different colors like that, which are kind of drab or kind of uh, milk toast, I guess you could say. But I always like to do a pop of color either in the blouse or something else. Now, with this jacket here, um, it looks very much like a just a simple suit But one thing that I do and again ignore the basting <laughs> but That I like to do in my jackets is for the wow factor is put the lining in a fabric that will catch the eye that where you see this garment when I take off this jacket you will be able to see it and say that's a tailor's made jacket or tailor made suit. Um, it's not something that you necessarily get, you know, in fast fashion or off the rack. So that is, those are details that I like to put in my jackets and in the, the skirts also. Um, I, a lot of times I will do a Hong Kong finish in the skirts. And so that way, um, it, to me, I'm the only one who sees the inside of the skirt many times, but kind of like the skirt that goes with our sew along, there's a lace detail in the hem when I hemmed this skirt. So you, uh, nobody is really going to see that. Maybe somebody might see it, but it's very rare that anybody would see the inside of a skirt, but I see it. And so those are details that I put to make me feel like me. But anyways, um, the let me show you again, make sure I'm getting the right one. For this one here, I'm actually going to be making this one and finishing hopefully this week. 
the lining that I am going to use for that one for the navy stripe is this lining. I purchased this lining at Joann's. It is a silky fabric. And I saw this and I thought, wow, that's got to be a lining. So I got some of the material and I am looking forward to uh, showing you guys that when I'm done. And then hopefully I've got to really finish this one too. You can see that it still has all the basting lines and everything inside of it. But pretty much on this one, all I have to do is finish the details in the lining at the hem and then sew on the cuffs. But there were some definite details to this jacket. And you can see I have to do the lining down here too. But there were um, a lot of details in this jacket that I really, really did like. And to where you can really alter it and fit it to you and to your style and to your shape. But I, I really like this pattern. So this is one that I'm going to hopefully finish and then I'm going to do the navy with this lining hopefully this week. So that's that one. Now, a net, oh, and then the, the other pattern that I featured for last month that I'm also going to be doing um, out of the navy stripe. I'm looking for just the right lining for that one because I want it to be a lot different than this one. I'm thinking about maybe going with a floral or something like that. So I'm uh, needing to get the lining first and then it gives me inspiration to change up the pattern or to do different little techniques to it. Now another um, pattern, like I said, I love the vintage suits that's my style so i liked view b so let me, let me so this one right here what i really loved about this pattern is you can tell that the front that it is almost like an a-line skirt barely an a-line skirt but there's more of a, a fuller skirt in the back I really liked that detail. Also, another detail that I liked in this suit is the short sleeve. I really like that. This sleeve here, it looks like it has buttons all the way around the sleeve. Um, I didn't like that too much. I might try it. I don't know. Oh, here you can see it a little bit better right here, the sleeve. So you can, maybe, I hope that focuses in. But anyways, it's a Simplicity 8242. And it's a double-breasted suit pattern. So that's definitely one that I am also going to make. It'll probably be right around September or later on because I'm going to be um, doing the, finishing this one and the two navy jackets, or the two navy suits. And then uh, this will be my third one. Okay, now, <laughs> this is one of the patterns I bought last month, and this is another one. It is the Simplicity 8344. It's an Ashley Nail Tipton pattern, and it is this gloss here that I really, really did like. And it is uh, a bodysuit. That was a detail that I really liked in this. And you can see here, let me see if I can show it. It's view F is the one that I'm wanting to do. And um, yeah, it has a ruffle neckline off the shoulder. But what I'm wanting to do is put straps so that I can still wear a bra with it. And there are little um, things that I do to the straps and so that um, when I when I wear a bra, the strap will stay right on my bra. And I'll share those details with you. Little things that I've learned over the years. But this is the fabric that I purchased for that blouse, for this one here. Oh, it fell and hit the camera. Sorry about that. But um, for that blouse there. So this is the fabric. It is a royal blue. Um, knit jersey. It's much like the 
the jersey that I am wearing, the t-shirt that I made. Um, but it's also, again, it's a jersey that you, when stretched, you can't see through it. So um, that is uh, good for a t-shirt or a um, blouse like that. Let me grab it again so you can see that. And I purchased a lot of this fabric also. It was at a good um, price. So I purchased a bunch of it so that I can make um, a couple more t-shirts like the one that I'm wearing so that um, I can have it in blue also. Okay. Now, let me make sure I've gotten to everything. I would like to take a, a just a quick minute to say thank you for watching my videos and how much I appreciate each and every one of you taking time to spend with me. I appreciate your comments and your questions and if you have any suggestions to some of the videos for the future that you would like for me to post. Please add them in the comments below or you can um, direct message me through Instagram. You can give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative or enjoyable. So I look forward to making more videos for you in the very near future and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.